Hey, welcome to another session here at Creating Your Big Break Summit. My name is Jesse Paul Smith. I am the host of your summit. And in this session, we're going to talk about how you can dance your way to freedom. And it's not what you think. Make sure you tune in. Let's get it. All right, so I am super excited for my next guest to come to the stage, Bishal Sarkar. For the past 14 years, he has been a real world public speaker and life mastery mentor who has been speaking on stages around some of the biggest uh, companies in the world, including Microsoft, Apple, Cisco, IBM, etc. Many of the Fortune 500 companies in the world hire him to train their top leaders to help them achieve more personally and professionally, to help them increase their confidence, productivity, and profit while maintaining a top-notch balance in life. As the highest paid public speaker in India, Bashal does not speak uh, bookish knowledge. The only place he speaks from is his personal experience and decades of wisdom he's got from big failures and bigger successes in life. Currently, he mentors corporate professionals and turns them into confident and super powerful speakers and presenters. I am super excited to get into this conversation. Bishal, welcome to the stage, my man. Awesome, man. Jesse, love your show. Love the mission that you're on, helping all the, all the entertainers, performers, dancers, singers, magicians to really create their big break. Awesome, man. It's, it's an honor to be here and represent India on your show. Yeah, man. I was super excited when uh, when we were, we got you as a confirmation one, because we have had, um, you know, first of all, I, I love the culture of India. We've had a lot of people uh, on our worldwide dance challenge show from there and they are just amazing people. And then when I heard what you are doing with your, with your, uh, your business, your coaching company, uh, I knew this was going to bring a lot of value. And some people might be saying, well, that's great. He's worked with all of these He's worked with all of these entrepreneurs, these, these big companies, these CEOs, but Jesse, I'm a performer. I'm actually trying to run from that. I don't even want to be a part of that. Um, what, you know, what, what, how does this really align still with what we're going to talk about today? How is this going to benefit them uh, with, with what they're trying to accomplish? Yeah, I think, uh, I think one business that we are all in, whether you're a CEO, vice president, or a performer, you're getting started as a dancer, or, you know, Jesse, you are telling me that now you're working with, uh, you know, one of the Lady Gaga's choreographer as well, right? So it doesn't matter who you are. Um, your communication is your passport to your wealth. If you want financial wealth, you want exposure, you can't hide behind the computer or, or hide behind a phone or hide behind a dance video because you have to go out there and speak because your communication tells people who you are. And when I say communication, dancing or anything you do, I mean, I work with a lot of people, right? Like these are CEOs and they, they just have the same feeling. Like I, I'm an expert in my field. Why do I need the speaking for to get to the next level? Uh, if you want to be just a dancer, if you want to be just a professional, if you want to just be a singer, this is fine. But if you look at any performer, any of the world-class performers, look at Bono. He's not known just as a singer anymore. He's known as a philanthropist. Why? Because he's talking about his mission. So this yeah. is for people who are already doing good. But in the beginning, understanding that the biggest problem that many times performers have, and I had that too, the biggest problem is not that you are not good enough as a dancer. The biggest problem is people don't know you. Enough mm -hmm. people don't know you. Obscurity, as Cardone says, is the biggest problem of any professionals today. You have to get yourself known out there. It's not just about making just a video and just, just putting it on Instagram or YouTube or, or things. It's just really talking about it, talking about your philosophy, talking about what you want, what you want to do. So it doesn't matter whether you are a CEO and the vice president that I train or you are a dancer, you're getting started. If you don't know how to speak, if you don't know how to communicate, if you don't know how to actually get your message across to the world, honestly, you will dance your roommates, your soulmate, your family, your friends, and some of the close customers will know, but the world at large will not know because you have to communicate because your communication and the dance framework we're going to talk about, that's going to take you to the, to the wealth and the freedom. And that's why it's very important for any professional, any dancer, any singer, any magician, doesn't matter what you do. It's very important for you to become a powerful speaker. And the time is right now. 
Yeah, and I, I think uh, you can tell your passion about this message, not probably because it's your business, but like you said, it's your experience because uh, one of the things I want to kind of put context around that people can really resonate with you. I think your story is very in alignment with all everybody that's on this this the summit right now is watching. They're dreamers. They've been dreaming of going from where they are now to this life that they have been dreaming about that that includes their passion as their vehicle to live that out. So Absolutely. let's let's break some context. Why are you so passionate about this message? Because I have been bullied in my school by a school teacher for four years because of my communication, because of my confidence, because of my skin color. And for four years, he used to call me a son of a bitch in front of other students. He used to call me names and I could not say anything because of Indian culture. I could not come to my parents and say, look, my, my teachers told me that because I come from a culture, Jesse, where if you got scolded, it's for a reason. And if I told my parents, they would scold me even more. So I, you know, think about it. I, I had this, you know, I'm being called names. I'm being abused in my, in my, in my classes by a teacher for no other reason than I don't know what. Uh, maybe he needed dance to get the, you know, <laughs> but, but, uh, he used to call not just me, but uh, some other people. I remember there was a guy who was overweight. He used to call him names too. And I had this, you know, this frustration. I used to feel bad. And it was not just the, the words of that teacher, but I remember some of the students after the classes, the way they used to smirk at me and look at me like I'm a loser because I felt like one um, that shattered my self-confidence a lot because I come from a background where Jesse, I was born and brought up in a middle-class background and growing up, I did not have much. I mean, my father, my parents paid 289 rupees uh, per year for my school tuition fee. And just for my friends in the U S that's $4 a year. Wow. for my school tuition fee. So that's the background I come from. Um, that's, that was the yearly fee, not, not a monthly fee. That was the yearly fee that my parents paid. And because I studied there, so English is my third language. So growing up, I had a lot of communication challenges. And after that, after that four years of mental and emotional torture um, that I had, uh, it shattered my self-confidence. And when I went out there after that, you know, pursuing my graduation, pursuing my higher education. And after that, my, my management education. And then when I started working for companies like business standard first, so those different companies, I started finding that, you know, those, even though I was good at what I was doing, those emotional scars, the programmings behind me were really um, hindering. That was, that was holding me back from expressing myself. And sometimes when I had to have a conflict or a care, you know, confrontation with somebody, I used to always hold back, even though I knew exactly I was right. I did not have the confidence. Basically I lacked the balls to be a man. And that's when I started working on myself. I started going to different, you know, theoretical courses, books, audios, everything. I've tried different meditation uh, and, and different, different stuff. But what I found out is I needed a practical, like step-by-step -step things. Like, for example, I'm sure um, many of the people who are amazing dancers and the great community that you've built. And I, I want to thank you for the great work that you're doing, Jesse, as well, um, because you're really helping people be themselves and you're helping those people, those, those performers achieve the ultimate freedom, which is something that is, that is beyond, beyond great. So I, I applaud you, Jesse, for the mission that you have for the people that you are helping. And um, because of me having those, you know, inhibitions, I started le really learning. I started approaching different mentors. I really investing in myself because until and unless you invest in yourself, you don't take anything, anything seriously at all. Started learning. But then I realized in India, a lot of the people that were teaching different methods and techniques either were like 70 year old and people could not relate to them or they are, they, they were young, but they did not have the right tools and techniques to speak from the experience. They were speaking from books. They got maybe, you know, trained by Tony Robbins or Jack Canfield, but there, you know, you could, you could hear the same lines being told uh, that, that are told from the stages of Tony Robbins and all that. So I started telling my story. Like I started being the guy. I, I realized that I just had to be myself. I'm, I'm, I'm in the business of being Vishal Sarkar. That's my business all the time. So I started being me. I started really showing up. I started recording some videos after that. I started, and then I started getting calls from companies like HDFC bank, Axis bank, some of the banks in India, and then companies like Microsoft, IBM, Cisco, Wipro, all the systems, they started calling me and sharing um, 
they started hearing my stories because I started, you know, I started getting attraction because of my communication and my message and unique storytelling methods. And at that time, I was still did not know niche or niche. I did not had all the idea how could I differentiate myself. I was just, I remember this story that once upon a time I heard about, you know, the, the footballer Pele. Um, when he, when a professional, uh, somebody in his, uh, in his educational system, you know, first came to Pele and said that, you know, we're going to pay you for playing football. I heard the story that Pele said, football, I love playing football and somebody will pay me for it. So in the same way, when, when people started paying me for speaking, I was like speaking, I love speaking now and I'm working on my speaking and somebody will pay me for it. So I was like, I didn't know that this is a business. So I started getting calls from different companies. This Microsoft started going there, giving, you know, the typical 45 minute speeches and all that, you know, many, many years later. And then some of the people in the front rows, you know, the CEOs, the vice president, they started approaching me in the corner, in the cafeteria, like, hey, can I get your cell phone number? Like, for what? It's like, you know, can you train me? So they started really having the, you know, started approaching me to really train them on their specific communication skills, not just in the talking, but how I could communicate, you know, small small, small things I was doing. I remember the one time I was giving a speech and um, the mic was not working. And I had this headset mic uh, in the one side and it was not working. It was going on and off, on and off. And then in the middle of my presentation, the light went off, the PPT went off. And I just like, you know, the, the corporate setting and all that is fine. Then I just jumped from the stage toward the audience. I took the mic off, I threw it away. I said, enough is enough. Guys, we have a problem, okay? I'm going to shout. I'm going to give. And I started shouting. I said, fuck all the mic in front of all the people, because these words, fuck, you know, all that people in India, especially don't, don't really, they're like, oh my God, he's talking the F, he's dropping the F bomb. <laughs> and I started talking. I started being real. Uh, I said, Hey, forget all that because this is not about Mike. This is not about the thing. PPT is not the price I am and you are. So let's have a conversation. We spoke for next three hours without much light in the room, without the PPT, without the mic. And that was one of the best presentations I gave because people really connected with me. After that, people started coming to me and said, how do you do that? I said, what? There was a technical error. He said, no, after the technical error, how could you stay ready for that? And that's when I realized that this is something that people needed to learn, not just how to really make some PPT and speak, but how to speak on the spot, speak on different topics and take questions. And even if you don't know answer, how to make different activities and acronyms on the spot. And that's what people, people come to me for now. So we have a program called the, uh, you know, rock your speaking, speak like a CEO program. Then eventually people come to me, which is what I'm known for now is something that I call elite transformation mastermind, where we work with people really transforming all different areas of life. Because one thing I realized Jesse is a lot of men, especially I'm talking about 40 to 50 year old and also women too. Many of the people, either they have a lot of professional success and they are sacrificing their health, their relationship. They don't have social life. They don't have friends. They have competitions or they are really balancing life well, but they are not upgrading themselves very well. And they, I mean, the biggest fear they, that a man has is regret. Mm. You know, what, what if I live a regretful life? What if I die knowing, looking back, realizing, fuck, I did not do all that that I wanted. So that's what I work on right now. And, and it doesn't matter whether they are CEOs or vice presidents or the people who are watching right now, who are the, who are the performers. I am inspired by this quote by Jay-Z. Um, I'm not a businessman. I'm a business man. Mm. You are not just a dancer. You are in the business of you being a dancer. Um, so if you, it, it's, it's the is the entrepreneurial mind that you need to have, which I did not have just yet. I told you before the interview, you know, I come from a family where, you know, getting a government job was the only way toward a better life. My mother wanted me to be an engineer in the government sector. And uh, I did not have any passion for that because I wanted to, I want, I'm not a ma I'm not a machine guy. I'm a man or a woman guy. I'm a human guy. I think the same for you, same for you, because we connect, yep. we are human beings, you know, human, human people, uh, not yep. a machine people. So, so for me, it's all about really communicating in a way that really authentically connects with people. It's not about being a perfectionist because one of the things I have is, you know, it's not about perfection. It's all about connection. So it's mm -hmm. not about just being a good dancer. It's about speaking so well before a dance or even after a dance, even for five, 10 seconds in a way that really inspires people, gives them the education about your dancing or elevation inspires them or really empowers them to contact you because there are thousands of millions of dancers and singers 
the only way for you to differentiate yourself is not by being better at what you do, but by, by actually learning how to communicate what you do in a way that you get paid the big bucks and you can achieve the freedom. There is no point being a broke artist. There is an enormous happiness in being a wealthy artist. Now, I love what you're talking about here. It's not even so much about the speaking as it is about the connecting. You're talking about yes. um, how do you connect? Because some people might be saying, well, Jesse, you know, uh, you know, I don't really see myself wanting to speak on stages. If this isn't about that, although that's a great option, um, I've made a ton of money dancing uh, around the world, but I got the gig because I was going to speak as well. So I, I believe that speaking is a powerful tool, but what is this, what is this, you know, concept that you're talking about with really building a connection with people where they're going to want to either hire you, they're going to want to trust you, they're going to want to do more c collaborations and work with you. How does somebody really effectively communicate to really create that connection? I think uh, when you're really good at something, whether it's being an engineer or being a great singer or being a great dancer, I think we oftentimes as human beings become too much obsessed with that art that we don't understand the market value of that and how to connect that with somebody else. So for example, if a, mm. if a company is hiring a dancer, he does not just care about, you know, like you, that specific move that you have and how much experience you have and, and all that, they probably want a great show. So understanding the, the end result, you know, in marketing, they say WIIFM, what's in it for me? So mm -hmm. that's very important for you to communicate. So I'm going to just give a quick framework. I call it NICE, N-I-C-E. So whenever you talk to a business, you know, any potential client, um, whether, you know, they want to hire you or they, they uh, want to have them, have you on their show, you need to know the N, which is your, their need. Why do they need you as the dancer or the singer? Their I, interest. What's their interest specifically? C, the concern. What's their concern? Maybe last year they had a dancer and, and the way they behaved and the way, you know, after the show they behaved with the audience, it was not good. So what's their objection? You need to know that all upfront before you even say yes or they say yes to you. And then the E, what's their exact expectation? So needs, interests, concerns, and expectations. Once you have that dialed in and you ask people questions, instead of talking about you, you know, I have done this, I know this much of singing, you're great, you know, I have millions of views. When you really talk about them and what you want, bingo, that, that's the game. That's the difference between being paid $1,000 and being paid $15,000, pretty much for the same thing. The $15,000 guy is not getting is, is not a 15 times better performer. He's mm. 15 times better, smarter in asking the right questions as a businessman. And, and then the art is basically the same. So that is the one level of connection, connecting your art, your what you do with their end result. Because how, why you are passionate about your art might not be their interest in why they are hiring you for the art. So, you know, this painting, for example, you know, um, when I'm buying, if the guy starts talking to me about the brush and the color, I'm gone. <laughs> I don't need Buddha at that time. But if he asks me, why do you need it? Where, where are you going to put it? Is, it? is it because you want a Zen feeling in your office? Is it because you're going to put it on because it represents a good vibe in your meditation? If he talked to me about that, I would be willing to pay 10 times more for this because it's about actually understanding the hot button. So I think that is, that is a good point of you know, connection. Second thing is whenever you are speaking um, virtually, uh, one thing you, you said is many times people say, I don't speak on stage. This is stage. Hey. You know, you being on a Zoom call is stage. Shakespeare said that the world is your stage, mm. my friend. The world is your stage. That's so many point. times people think stage is the physical stage, not j just now. And I'm not talking about just after COVID. I'm talking about way before. Every time, what is public speaking? It's speaking with anybody who's a public, any, anybody outside yourself, outside your family, even if it's a two, three people, the way you communicate that, that leads, you know, to a good lead or maybe not. But if you, um, if you just focus on my dance and my style of dance and my style of singing or my style of guitar and my style of rap, 
it's it's not just about that talent i think is overrated it's um, who said that talent is overrated i think uh, I forgot the book's name talent is overrated but um, I, I think it's important for you to understand that you are the brand and that's why if you look at any even cricketer or footballer apart from the game they are constantly branding themselves they are in the spotlight um, patricia fripp a speaker said many years ago it's not the customer's jobs job to remember you here let's say don't let's not say customer let's say the audience it's not the audience's job to remember you it's your job to make sure they don't have a chance to forget you love at that all. and love that. and you don't do it just by the dance it's what you do before the dance before the performance after the performance staying in touch with them and i think if people started you know thinking like an entrepreneur and collecting contact details and stuff like that that's how you go from being a solopreneur artist to really owning an empire and business and then the so, then the art is the reward for that yeah so i i i love what you said about this being a stage and i was i was yeah. i'll be i'll be honest i was kind of hoping that that's where you're going to take it cuz that's so true is that um you know the physical stage is just one one stage at this point um, but, you know, one of the things that we constantly see is, you know, performers are constantly putting out their content, right? They're, they're constantly putting out their, their, their dance videos, their music videos, their comedy sketches, their, you know, and, and because of the way that the old methods of training has been is it's all on making sure that it's looking good, the, the lighting's good, the, the video quality's good. Um, there has been a lot of that connection that can be lost. So when you talk about yeah. before or after the video or before or after the performance, what are some strategies that people could use for, you know, that first five to 10 seconds of their video to hook the audience, or maybe they want to do a, a, a video in between their, you know, performances that would be able to communicate with the audience what are some strategies or some tactics that they can use to really build connections with their audience by doing that that stuff uh i'm gonna show you a quick video maybe not the entire one but uh it's one of the most popular videos of me one of the most so this one we shot it on my this older older version of my phone okay uh i i want to not show you the entire video but it's like a short version. We shot it at a mall. I, my girlfriend and I went to eat something at a mall once, like five, six years ago. We were having some ice cream and she said, hey, you want to shoot a video? I said, yeah. What do you want to speak on? I said, yeah, how to overcome stage fear. So not the good lighting, none of that. Bad editing. 150,000 views so far. Okay, on YouTube. Zero dollar paid. We probably got um just from this video uh if you type how to overcome stage fear this comes number one on youtube no tagging nothing i'm and one of the things if you see in the in the comment section there people say this is raw this is so real this is so amazing it's like three minute video we probably got about 250 customers in the last five years just from that video no advertising nothing and the reason the video works so well is because there is noise you can hear people you know, saying things in the background of the video, it is not perfect at all. Because in today's world, it's not about the green screen, it's about the real screen. People want to hear and green screen is fine too. But but the reality is that people appreciate more in the in the raw quick hitch than everything polished. And one of the things I teach inside my program is people sometimes when they make videos and stuff like that, uh, not for promoting themselves, but you know, sometimes they put out content on LinkedIn about their expertise. They do multiple shots, like 30, 40 times. I say, hey, just one time. Because in real life, you don't meet somebody and say, hey, my name is Bishop. Hold on. I, I want to retake that. Never happens, right, in real, real life. So, you know, I want to edit that part out. Hold on. Don't, don't hear that. Unhear that. It doesn't happen. So I think, I think um, if, if somebody just be you know is themselves uh it, it's if you fall in the middle of the dance or if something happens instead of you cutting that part out actually making that stay that that i think adds value because now people see that he's a real guy people don't people pay ten dollars to good amazing production hundred dollars to world-class production 
but hundred thousand dollars to somebody that they really feel connected with. So mm -hmm. it's the connection and connection comes from fault. Um, John Maxwell said this line, if you want to impress people, talk about your success. If you want to Im impact people, talk about your failure. So you don't have to talk about your failure, but if there is a failure video, just talk about it. One of my highest viewed videos on YouTube is titled uh, my worst speech ever. When I talk about how once upon a time I was giving a speech, the average audience I, uh, age was 75. My father was there on the audience and I got heckled by all the audience members because I was a young guy. And I talk about that. I talk about that failure. I talk about the four F's, you know, failure, frustration, first and flaws. When you talk about these things as a dancer, people really connect with that. So I think it's important to be a philosopher, not from a woo -woo philosophy point of view, but things you believe in, things where you stand for, your personal story. Those things will make people come back to watch more of your, more of your videos and hire you more than you just being good at what you do. So, so these are some of the things because people want two things. Okay. I want to quickly write it down. One is your competence, which is something that you're good at. Of course, you've got to be a good dancer. The first part is the competence. Are you a good dancer at all? Will they really, you know, have a good time or a good business having you? And the second part, I think that most people do not focus on is the character. Mm. Are you a real fucking person or are you just trying to put on a show? Uh, no pun intended. So, <laughs> you know, competence and character. And once you show people, who you really are and what you believe in those like that's when you become a genius and that's when you become you know people's favorite not just somebody that people subscribe to so i think showing your character before and if there is a blooper video if there is a old video five years ago that you shot on your old iphone that did not go well posting that saying guys this is me five years ago what do you guys think you will get mad respect from people. So these are some of the things that people can do, I think, Jesse. Yeah, I love that. Now, I know that you have a, a framework that is, is uh, you know, really encompasses all this stuff that we're really talking yeah. about here. And I, I know that it's a, it's a powerful framework because I think it's, it's something that people can take this framework that you have and apply it to every single day and be able to create content, create performances, uh, you know, get on stages, whatever stage that might be, and, and make an impact by utilizing this framework as a filter. So would you share that framework with us? Yeah, that's what we spoke about, the dance framework that we made for your audience. So the D stands for direct. Uh, I'm not talking about being direct, but actually directing a conversation. So look, you are a dancer, you have to contact people. Either you contact them or they contact you. There has to be conversation, okay? One thing I say is conversation equals cash. Conversation mm -hmm. equals cash. And good conversation equals good cash. Um, and I'm not talking about calling people saying, hey, hire me, hire me, but really staying in touch with people. So when you call people, understand that you have seven seconds to make a first impression. They're not gonna give you hours and hours to have a conversation. So quick few things uh, you can do is, you know, make sure that you are, you're really directing. You tell them that, look, look, the thing is the reason I'm calling you or the, the whole reason for our conversation is because I heard about this show that you're doing and I'd love to come and perform. Uh, and I'm going to ask you some questions to find out if or how I'm the right performer for your show. And if I feel I am, I'll be happy to tell you. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer your question. And in the end, we can make an educated decision. How does that sound? So immediately you're taking you know, like control of that conversation from the get go. Instead of you talking about here, here is the style of dancing I do. You want to become a doctor. A doctor does not start talking about his medicines. Hey, patient, come here. Let me show you all my medicine. Hey, where does it hurt? L let me understand. So asking better good questions, I think puts you in control. The, the A stands for in dance, accelerate, accelerate. So you want to accelerate the conversation by what I call um, you know, basically understanding the, the nice framework that we spoke about, understanding their need, their interest, their concern, their expectation. Um, that's, that's very important. Now, again, uh, Jesse, after I talk about the dance framework, I'm happy to talk about, you know, a, a framework that, that they, they can use to, 
you know, talk about their dance on their videos and stuff like that as well. I'm talking right now in terms of a communication context when you're actually yep. talking to a human being on the phone call or face to face. So direct accelerate with, with uh, accelerate the conversation by getting to know their end goal. And then new N stands for new. What is the, what, what do you bring? What is the new, the novel um, that you bring that all the other people don't do? Because a dancer is a dancer, as a singer is a singer. What do you bring? Not like more, but what, what distinction do you bring that makes you stand out from the crowd? You know, maybe it can be that, you know, you, your dancing style is different or how you interact with the audience or, but you have to prove that point to people. Uh, so new and novel is what people pay for. Um, the C stands for compel. So this is the offer part. You know, what, what's your offer? Um, generally people, if you can make a good package for people or compelling offer, I don't know if you know the guy, Joe Polish from the genius network. He says uh, a compelling offer is 10 times more powerful than a convincing argument. A lot of times, you know, a lot of performers and businessmen, we, you know, sometimes people lot sometimes get objections like, and then we get into the defensive mood trying to prove our value. Well, it started because you never made a compelling offer in the first place. If you know how to start the conversation, I often say this to people. Um, if you watch a cricket match and at the, at the end of 50 overs, one team loses the game, they lost long before. It got revealed toward the end. In the same way, if you lose a sale or if you lose a business, it did not happen in the last one moment. You lost in the beginning and the first five minutes and that it's being revealed in the last moment when they actually hire somebody else. So making a compelling offer and the E stands for elevate. This is the time where you actually go and elevate the audience in a way that you, you get the reach, the recommendation, the referral and the revenue, the four R's reach recommendation, referral and the revenue. And you want all that. So direct, you want to have direct conversation with people and direct them how the conversation is going to go. You want to accelerate by talking about their needs, interest, concerns, and expectation. You want to talk about what is new or novel about you. What do you bring to the table that nobody does? I know one thing for sure, Jesse, you are interviewing some of the best speakers right now for this amazing summit you, you're putting on. No freaking person brings the Eastern philosophy just like, just like I do onto this show. Would you agree with that? Yep. The new or the novel that I bring in. Yeah. So, and, and, and then the C, the compelling offer that you're going to make to them. And, and sometimes you have to also follow up in a way that doesn't sound needy because you want to choose, not chase. You're a performer, not a salesperson. And toward the end, you elevate the audience with the four R's, uh, the reach, the recommendation, the referral, and the revenue. So this is the dance framework and you can use this and we can talk about it some other time. But if you use it uh, you know, sequentially and very powerfully, you know, you can, you can make 10 times more money in the next 10 months with 10 times less stress and you will have 10 times more uh, reach. Yeah. And I have to agree with that because coming out of a sales background, being in sales for 20 plus years, developing sales teams, you know, taking yeah. underperforming sales teams and making them the best in their companies. Um, what you're talking about there is people used to say this all the time. I'm not a salesperson. Well, listen, we are all in the business of sales because John Maxwell, uh, who you referenced earlier, I, you know, I'm, is, a, is a big influence in my life. He said, um, yeah. leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And my Absolutely. philosophy on sales is the same thing. Sales is influence, nothing more, nothing less. The same way you influence somebody to be in a music video with you, you're still having to sell them on the idea. You still have to sell the the agent on on representing you all these different things you're you're in sales but one of the things i really want to bring to the forefront that i think is absolutely genius that you brought up was that nice uh, acronym and it talks about really understanding what it is the needs and the wants of the other person if you combine that with what you were talking about new and novel um, you understand how, what you are, what is novel about you, what is new about you that you bring to the table, how that actually benefits, um, yeah. their, their needs. And, uh, and that is a, that is a recipe for success. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, I was talking to a client a couple of two, two and a half years ago. He is one of my one-on-one -on -one coaching clients now. And at that time, uh, the investment to join my, the, the, I, I have a elite transformation mastermind. 
So it's 25 lakhs rupees to join per person at the full price. Generally, when we open, we open two twice a year. I take six people into that group. So $25,000 is uh, 25,000, uh, 25 lakhs in currency, I think will be about, you know, $70,000. And that's like probably one person that that's what they pay to be a part of our 12 month mentorship. But I work with them one-on-one -on -one in a small group. I was talking to this guy. I'll tell you why I'm saying this. And this guy was telling me, uh, a gentleman who's part of the mastermind even now, he was telling me that, you know, he's, he was making a lot of money in the business, but he was not having the happiness and he wanted to really make a lot more money. So, and he was basically, he was telling me that he's making this much money now and he wanted to make that much money. And he has spoken to different coaches before, right? Uh, he has gone to different people before, all the big names, starting with Tony Robbins, all the Indian you know, spiritual guru, Sadhguru and all that. And he said, you know, I'm not, you know, why sh I've gone to them, you know, you charge like so much more than them. Even if it's a small group, why should I pay you? I said, you don't have to pay me. I mean, you can, you can keep your money and keep your problem. I have zero problem with that. But the thing is, you tell me how is, and crore is the, uh, you know, currency in India. I said, how is five crore I mean, you are losing this much money. How is 25 lakhs, the fee to join the mastermind, bigger than the five crore sold? So, so you got to understand the big seven figure problem the organizer has that you can solve. And after that, that's when they don't compare you to another dancer, or another singer. Find the big ass problem that they have. And the biggest problem is not just having another dancer. Maybe it's a boring show. Maybe it's they, 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 they fear losing, they, they fear looking bad in front of the decision makers. What is the big thing? Once you understand the big seven figure problem and you charge a fraction of that, it's not a problem. Tony Robbins says this, that if you have a, a level six problem and you're a level five person, it's a big fucking problem. But if you are a level six problem and you're a level 10 person, that fucking thing is no more a problem. So, so it's all about actually elevating yourself and finding that big gap, the big hole that, that you can fill in. And, and see, this is why Jesse, having an entrepreneurial mind is very important than seeing yourself as a tech, you know, as, as a technician dancer, as, as uh, who's the guy, Michael Gerber talks about in his book, e -Myth. don't see yourself doing the job of what you do. See yourself as a business person who also happens to do the job sometimes. So dancing is not your business. Dancing is a reward for you to, to be in the business. Yeah, I love that. So uh, I guess really quick, uh, there's been just so much value here. What is, what is a couple of things that you see that, um, you know, when you're watching content on, on uh, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, yeah. and, and people are trying to communicate, but they're not doing effectively what they should, what they're trying to do. What are, what are two things that you see that they're doing wrong that they should change immediately? And, and you know, how can one implement it in the next video? Yeah, I think one thing they can do is I talk about it, the 3V formula. I'll quickly just draw it out for you on this paper. See, imperfection. I don't need slides. I mean, I, <laughs> I have so, slides it's called cue cards. Yeah, yeah. So, Three V. Okay. Visual, vocal, verbal, visual, vocal, verbal, where most people focus on generally is the verbal part. What am I going to say? The, the content 7% of what you say is words. 38% is your voice and 55% is your body language. Yep. So if you just focus on what you say, it's just 7%. And so if you do the best, you get seven out of hundred. Then comes the vocal part, your voice modulation, you pausing, you're talking about different things and smiling and being playful and charming in between the words and the sentences. That's when you get the 38%. And the final is the visual, how you use and dancers generally are very good at, at using body language, but not overdoing it in a way that I think, um, that that adds value to the audience and add value to the message so if th that's the first thing you know 3b formula 
uh, visual, vocal, verbal. Second thing, tell your fucking story. What's your story? Where do you come from? Why are you passionate about what you do? Talk about your philosophies. Uh, I, I believe also that sometimes people have, and especially performers, uh, plastic smile, you know, smiling just for the camera, but, but having a real smile. Like people can sense that, you know, you don't want to have the smile that the air hostesses have when you enter a oh, good afternoon. You know, you don't, you, you want to be so powerful that you don't smile with your cheeks. You smile with your eyes. Your eyes tell the story. Your eyes are the windows to the soul as Emerson said many years ago. Yeah. And, and also another thing is you got to be highly, I, I call it the HILA formula, H-I-L-A, high intention, low attachment. Oftentimes people make a video and they, they want, they have high expectation. Oh my God, I need to post this and I need to get this many leads or this many likes. Forget that. You know, you, you can't go to the gas station or the bank and just in cash with your likes and comments. You need business in the bank account. How, so so you got to post and, and it's not about just a one-time thing. You got to post consistently, not frequently. Frequency you decide, but consistency. Maybe once a week, maybe once a month, doesn't matter. And different methods of, of uh, content. One can be about just you dancing or singing. One can be a behind the scene. One can be you going to, this is one thing we are doing right now. So I'm going to my hometown and my team is shooting a video in the 150 square feet uh, railway quarter that I grew up in. Inside that, I'm going to talk about my story. You, you're going to go there and talk about it. It's a dirty place, cow dung, shit all there, right? I'm going to go there and talk about my story. And that's going to be a Facebook, Facebook post and a Facebook ad very soon mm. because I want to, because this is a behind the scene, me connecting with the root for, before I talk about my fruit, because mm. the deeper the roots you talk about, the deeper the fruits you talk, fruits you get, because the more you connect, the more you collect. You don't want mm. just mind and eye share. You want heart and wallet share. So visual, vocal, verbal, storytelling is very, very important. And another thing I want to talk about is your first impression, how you start any presentation. If you just say, hey, my name is this, I want to talk to you today about do something great, do something funny, you know, break something. Um, for example, if, if, if I had a, a show called The Big Break, you know, I would take a big champagne bottle and I would break on the wall and I'll say, ha, ah, feels good. Big Break Summit coming soon. And I would start like that. So using metaphors and analogies in a way that, that goes to the subconscious mind, not just the head, but the mind, the back of the mind and stays there. And, and these are some of the things people can do. And also, I think you understand that you're not talking to hundreds of people there. Nobody, hundreds of people don't sit and watch a video. One person does. You're speaking to one person. So mm. don't say things like, I want you all to get it. I want you to get it. Hey, I don't know. Maybe, maybe you have this. And so you speak to one person on the other side of the video, even though thousands of people are watching, but at that time, that one person under the blanket on the top of the building, they're watching or walking on the road, they're watching communicate in such a manner that that's a one-on-one -on -one communication for them. That's when connection happens with people. And that's when people pay you the big bucks. So these are some of the tips that people can use. Jesse, what do you think? Man, I, 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 there's so much gold in there. There's so much gold in there. This is something that um, you're going to want to watch over and over and over and write down all these things Bishal's talking about because literally he's giving you uh, these frameworks, these, these nuggets that you can use today to start connecting. Now, the what, one thing I want to ask you is, is how does somebody – how does somebody measure the difference between the long game and the short game? Cause I think that's the other thing that people oh. really, really struggle with is that I posted this video today, um, but I got no likes or shares or, you know, I, I, you know, I went and did this performance today and there was only 20 people in the audience. So, you know, I, I don't really know if it was worth my time. How does somebody stay really yeah. focused on the long game versus the short game? Now, I, I, I want to uh, kind of preface that with, obviously, you need some sort of results in the short game. You do. And yeah. what are those results that they should be looking at so that they know, you know, maybe they're on the right, the wrong path, right? Um, but, but there is this whole thing about the long game versus the short game. Yeah, this is important. I mean, long game is what I'm, I'm all in for, but 
if you don't have like you can't be a light in the world if you can't pay your light bills (laughs) so true Uh, i'm gonna quote that that's a good one i like that one so so for you you know make sure you're, you're taken care of not just financially but also the things you're doing generally but i have this belief always that i believe in and this comes from buddhism that um if i'm hammering a big rock to break it and the 497th hammer breaks it was the fifth hammer hammering useless or was it it was all setting up for the final one mm-hmm. so you are going to get I'll, I'll tell something that, something that that i think people need to hear so you whoever you are right now you watching this video on the summit from jesse and me uh, you will never be paid what you're worth never you'll be paid you'll be underpaid for most of your life and one day you're going to be overpaid for the rest of your life but you're never going to be paid what you're worth so you'll be underpaid for a long time but are you willing to to go through that uh one of my mentors jonathan sprinkle says you have to do what you have to do until you get to do what you want to do you have to do what you have to do until you get to do what you want to do and sometimes that means making the phone call and posting those videos or the emails and different content but i think the question that you asked another one is how, how do i measure what's my measurement what's my kpi jesse when it comes to health when it comes to in fact i was i went for a walk right before this this interview today uh, i i know the outcome i want i break it down into the inputs and i measure the input because that's what i control so money is the scorecard in business submission is the scorecard in spirituality love is the scorecard in relationship and self love is the scorecard in your life so in your business you decide what do you want to attract it is it cannot be just likes it can be number of contacts that i'm making on a daily basis okay it can be 5 it can be 10 it can be 15 it can be 2 doesn't matter but you being consistent with that on a daily basis because the only person you cannot lie to is the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror so so having so that that system right it's a system number 1 you know what what are you tracking so for me generally uh i tell my team every friday saturday and sunday is my speaking time all other four days i'm not speaking so how many webinars and classes i'm running that enrolls people from one program to another um that's that's how i track so it can be for you how many times are you posting that doesn't matter uh you know what likes and comments i'm getting if you're putting your best you know you need the right view as gary v says not the lot of views the right view can be a view from a guy from cnn that can do everything for you so this old story um from buddhism about a woodcutter and a spiritual master uh, a guy comes and says you know so so dear dear master what do i do before enlightenment he said chop wood and carry water so okay during enlightenment he said chop wood and carry water a- and after enlightenment chop wood and carry water so what is your chop wood and carry water it can be making a daily video and posting it can be posting multiple times it can be actually calling and when you start getting the results having the humility to continue those work because sometimes you know success gets to our head and we think oh my God, i'm a big guy now i'm a big shot i got my big break but that's when you know the the ego stops you that's when you have the nike syndrome n i k e now i know everything about dance <laughs> now i know everything about the singing business the music business so not having that and that's why i am so inspired by people you know by you because you continue to learn and grow even after having so many years of experience in sales and marketing and business now you help people scale their businesses it's it's having that spirituality the 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 depth and i think another thing is performers need to have some still time and some me time i'm not talking about the dancing and the practicing but some some time with stillness solitude and and silence it can be meditation it can be some journaling but when you really meet yourself not you're not busy expressing yourself you're busy reflecting on yourself 
I think that gives a lot of humility that many, many times we are so busy with the Instagram and the dopamine and the Facebook and the WhatsApp and the call and the like and the revenue and the Excel sheet that we miss the mark because at the end of the day, <clears throat> the only time, the only way for you to perform at a highest level is when you have a deep level of confidence. Just here, I want to end with a quick story here on this point and you direct me, you stop me when you want to. Okay, brother. You're good. Um, you're good. Brad Hogg, an Australian cricketer, once um, was bowling and Sachin Tendulkar, <coughs> Indian cricketer who retired, was batting in cricket. It was India versus Australia. I used to be a very big cricket fan at that time. Not anymore <laughs> now. So uh, Brad Hogg bowled um, Sachin Tendulkar, clean bowled and, uh, on, on first ball. And it was the first time Brad Hogg and uh, Sachin Tendulkar came face to face, right? So at the end of the game, uh, Brad Hogg, there was a knock on the door of Sachin Tendulkar. And it was the, it was Brad Hogg. And Brad Hogg said, you know, it's, it's an honor for me to just come and just say hello. I've been a big fan, but I wanted to give you a gift. And he gives this white ball, the cricket ball. And Sachin, you know, the short guy says, Okay, thank you. That's his voice, by the way. Okay, thank you. And, and he closes the door. And on the ball, there was a sign of um, Brad Hogg saying, how was it? Basically, it's like, yeah, bold you, big guy. Right? <laughs> uh, five, five minutes later, there was a knock on the door of Brad Hogg. It was Sachin Tendulkar. And he said, your return gift. And on the other side of the ball, it was saying, it said, it will never happen again, Sachin Tendulkar. Since that day, Brad Hogg and Sachin Tendulkar came on the ground face to face for 37 times. Sachin never got bowled again by Brad Hogg. This is called preparation. Uh, Once you make a commitment, you stick to it. You don't just say out of emotion and being high and you say, I'm going to make this happen. You have the confidence and then you back it up next day with preparation. I'm sure after signing that autograph, it will never happen again that Sachin wrote. He did not make, he did not go on partying and having champagne and beer. He fucking went to prepare not to be bowled by the same bowler again. And that's what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter. You're a CEO, you're a vice president, you're a multi-millionaire or you're doing just good in life. You need to prepare. Confidence is not just about what you say. It's what you back up with. Confidence comes from evidence. When you have deep belief in yourself, in your root, in your fruit, and you would know fucking that doesn't matter what comes my way. I'm going to figure out a way. It's figure outable. That gives you the charge up, that juice, that, that move, that groove, that mechanics for you to move forward. Because when you go through the process, you're going to see the progress. So, so count yourself, count the number of videos, the calls you're making, the contact, the asking for the referral, making sure your branding online is you know, good, uh, making sure your reputation is actually good, making you actually deliver what you ask for and staying in touch with the meeting planners or your customers or your clients, having an email campaign, creating a Facebook group, but being the business as Jay-Z as, as Jay said, not just a businessman, but a business. But I think, I think if everybody has the, the confidence and the tenacity, just like Sachin Delilukar showed, I think anybody can dance their way to freedom. Yeah, man, this has been, this has been so good. Bishal, I appreciate all the value that you have brought. Um, this was a fire session. I think everybody's going to leave this session just ready to, to, to levitate. It's, it's no wonder why you're, you're, coaching programs your masterminds are sold out because you can see the the passion that you bring with each each uh each meeting that you have so man again so much uh value here i appreciate it a lot and for all of you guys that are tuning in make sure you don't tune out yet we got still more coming for you here at the creating your big break summit and remember it's not just about talking it's about connecting and when you connect with the right people you build the business you want all right we'll see you in the next one thanks so much 